We kicked off the Berkeley Connected Campus initiative after researching useful applications of smart technologies appropriate to our campus. In examining the many potential use cases across the university, traffic management had a clear potential as a proof of value project. Part of the challenge in building a smart campus is matching useful scenarios with technology and campus units who are interested and able to participate. I've met with many functional teams to explore potential improvements to our campus via the Connected Campus. And in all the presentations you've heard today, success required a willing functional sponsor, suitable technology, and a real value to the unit and the university. For the technology solution we're about to hear, Dell and NTT offered a traffic flow proof of concept pilot. When I proposed this to Seamus at Parking and Transportation, he was an enthusiastic partner and collaborator. He developed a proposal, one of the first for the connected campus using the Amazon future press release format I described yesterday. But after doing that, he said, Bill, this project actually makes so much sense that the unit will fund it itself if you will contribute some of your time to making sure that technology works. I see the CTO role in part as a catalyst for digital transformation, and I'm thrilled to see the fruits of this initiative. I'll now turn it over to Seamus to describe this interesting pilot featuring observation and classification of traffic patterns for better curb management. This is Seamus Wilmot, the Director of Parking and Transportation, here to give you a quick update on a curb management study um, that we're doing in partnership with NTT and Dell. So what we're looking at is the curb along Bancroft at MLK and Eshelman. And um, we're going to quickly review the current state, which um, this was pre-COVID. We're calling the current state, but it was pre-COVID. Um, but it was one of the busiest routes for AC transit. We have ride hailing pick up and drop off. We have campus and uh, other shuttles, the campus store, MLK, Eshelman, um, and Zellerbach Hall. As a quick reminder, it's right along here. Uh, Bancroft and the area that we're really studying and we were able to put some NTT and Dell sensors was this intersection, the entrance to the Lower Sproul Garage um, that uh, is a very busy area. And to give you a sense of what it looks like before COVID, so in what was what used to be the normal times, this is Bancroft Way looking east, this is Eshelman Hall here, and um, what we find is that there's already a delivery truck in the bus only lane. We have a UPS truck that's clogging one of the um, drive uh, lanes. And the only thing we have left is this Sharrow, which is a um, bike lane and um, car lane. So what does this do? What does this do to traffic? Well, here we have a bus that's going around the delivery truck. Um, there's another bus stuck behind the delivery truck. And we have a pedestrian who's just crossing in the middle of the street. Then we have, just a couple of seconds later, we have cars that have to move out into the only uh, uh, available drive lane because the UPS truck is in the way. We, that bus is still stuck behind the delivery truck. And we have a bicyclist weaving in and out of the cars. Not very safe at all. Again, a different day, but we have a truck uh, stuck uh, uh, unloading its delivery right here in the bus stop. We have folks waiting at the bus stop, waiting for the bus that's never going to be able to get to them. This same Bake Mark truck is halfway into the intersection that is the entrance to the Lower Sproul Garage. We now have um, a delivery truck on either side of this intersection. This one stuck uh, at a fire hydrant um, delivering its goods. This car is trying to get out of Lower Sproul Garage. We have people crossing back and forth and trucks on either side of this intersection. Again, same situation. This is one of my favorites. This truck actually broke our clearance bar, um, but still had to get its delivery done. So it just stopped and clogged the whole drive aisle um, that was getting uh, in and out of Lower Spell Garage. So how do we um, take a look at this? Well, we asked NTT and Dell to come in and um, they installed some sensors. Again, the data they're able to do and analyze is during COVID, so it's uh, definitely skewed. But they took a look at traffic flow and congestion. They were able to identify the types of vehicles going by, help us determine the dwell time, meaning how much time somebody is spending at the curb, what's causing the congestion, and what does it just basically look like out there. So here's one of the cameras. It's looking east, and it's able to identify this was a bus. And this uh, picture is the second camera that's looking southward towards Blackwell Hall. Again, it's able to identify a car, identify pedestrians, another car that just went by. Here, a skateboarder would have to go behind this car that was in the crosswalk, another car going westward on Bancroft. But not only were the sensors able to tell what type of car, but they were just counting the cars for us as well. 
So here's a, a seven day look at the cars going by in hourly chunks. And what we thought was going to be the peak uh, time was going to be during the noon hour, sort of uh, people in the middle of the day. But what we're finding, and again, this is during COVID time, we're finding that in the evenings, that sort of 5 to 9 p.m. is the busiest time. So here's 7 p.m. We have 230 cars that went through in that hour. Um, so it's fairly interesting that in the evenings definitely is the uh, busy time at this intersection. And what type of cars are going by? So the sensors, um, the NTT sensors are able to tell us that, okay, the majority are standard vehicles, um, and then about 8% are buses and public transportation, which is great to see that that's uh, on the uptick. This is during the month of September. Um, and we have delivery trucks and emergency vehicles and, and just other, uh, other types of vehicles. But which, what's causing the congestion? Again, this is during COVID time, so the traffic flow is much lower than normal, uh, but parallel parking causes a lot of congestion. People are not good at uh, parking their cars, uh, especially parallel parking. Um, the bus lane, um, the traffic light, but here, temporary parking. People doing that double parking or pulling over to the curb and um, dropping somebody off that slows down a bus. That's what's causing the traffic congestion. So what are we going to do? What's the future? Well, we're hoping that these sensors, as part of our pilot, that we can um, we can figure out a way to have them help us decrease congestion. Can they help us manage deliveries? Can we now use these sensors to be able to uh, force delivery trucks to actually reserve a space on the curb? And um, we can tell them the time. You can only use that curb between 8.30, uh, before 8.30 in the morning. And you have to reserve that time. So it was only one truck delivering at a time. So we don't have three or four trucks clogging up the road. Can we monetize the curb? You know, people have been uh, traditionally driving and parking their cars, um, but um, you know, the, the future really seems to be that, uh, you know, the ride share. And you just come, you drop off um, at the curb and you get out of the car, you get into the car at the curb. And so, uh, and then also, can we replicate this around to other locations around campus, at the West Crescent or up by the business school or over at Northgate, um, other locations where we have lots of uh, pedestrians and bicycles and buses all um, uh, uh, going through the same intersection at the same time. Um, can we use these sensors um, to really help us manage those areas? And that's the hope. And that's why we'll keep working with Dell and NTT to see um, how we can do in phase two of our pilot.